certificate and complete details about Monaco mailed to you right away. Call 1-800-514-8181. Larry King Live, tonight, 9 Eastern on CNN. The last shot Michael Jordan will ever take in the NBA. If that's the last image of Michael Jordan, how magnificent is it? Ah, but Air Jordan is one step closer to taking the court again. It is the talk of the nation. From Washington to Chicago to courtside, reaction to what could be the booster shot the NBA needs. It is 7 a.m. in Washington, 6 a.m. in Chicago, where the news is being made this Tuesday, September 11th. From the CNN Center in Atlanta, this is CNN Live at Daybreak. Good morning, I'm Carol Lynn. And I'm Vince Cellini. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, let's see, there was this fellow, number mm. 23. Yeah, kind of tall guy. Yeah, played a little bit in the NBA, Michael Jordan. And the big story of the day, Michael Jordan coming back. His return to the league. We'll talk about the physical and mental challenges of his decision. He'll be 39 next February while the NBA season is going on. We have live shots galore all over the country to talk about Lots this. Lots of reaction. Also, other medical news this morning. A report indicating President Bush did not approve enough stem cell lines to give researchers what they need. Elizabeth Cohen got up early this morning when the news broke, and she's going to explain all of it to us. Well, what do you say we start with Michael? Go for it. Always gets the last <laughs> word, does Michael. All right, we're going to get more on the, just what Jordan told reporters in Chicago on Monday to tip them off to this story. And we are joined by Marty Burns of CNNSI.com, who spoke with Jordan. And Marty, one of the reporters breaking this story. Good morning, Marty. Good morning, Vince. It's good to see you again. Tell us about that conversation and what indication Michael gave to reporters. How did he tip his hand and do it strategically, I'm sure? Well, Michael didn't come right out and say it, uh, that he would come back, but he's told us that uh, he felt great, that the, his knee that had been bothering him in recent weeks uh, felt fine, and that barring any kind of uh, uh, flare-up of the tendonitis, he was ready to do this and to make a comeback to the NBA. And he said he would play for years. Now, we mentioned his age. He is 38 years old. And, Marty, there's a big difference in playing in the NBA than playing pickup games with NBA players in Chicago. So you feel like he's ready to take this next step? Yeah, you know, it's been hard to really get uh, an idea of how well Michael's playing because... The uh, games are closed to the media, uh, the, the pickup games that he's been playing. But we have talked to players uh, who have played in the games and spectators who have watched. And uh, you get the feeling from them that Michael's game uh, has really come on in recent uh, weeks as his knee has started to improve. And uh, that he's, he might not be the acrobat and the high wire player that he was early in his career, but that he's still uh, smart enough and uh, he's still good enough to get the job done. He would remain, you believe, one of the elite players in the NBA if he steps on the court in the fall? Yeah, I think he will. Uh, you know, Michael wouldn't come back unless he knew he could play at a, at a very high level. Uh, he's a guy with a lot of pride, and uh, he's set a, such a high bar for himself that uh, he wouldn't be doing this unless he was confident he could play at near the same level he was before. Maybe you can talk about what the next step would be in terms of uh, his relationship with the Wizards and his front office capacity. And I know you can't do both. You can't be an executive and a player. That's right. NBA rules uh, require uh, or don't allow an, an owner to, to participate or be a player. So uh, Jordan would have to divest himself of his ownership shares uh, in the team. But he told us yesterday that that's not a problem. Uh, he has a mechanism in place in which he can uh, uh, divest his shares temporarily and then reacquire them uh, when his playing career is finally over. All right, Marty Burns, thank you very much for that information. And, of course, uh, the NBA season will open up not so coincidentally for Michael Jordan and the Wizards in Madison Square Garden, October 30th, site of some of his great all-time games as a Chicago Bulls. So New York will be the spotlight on that night as Michael returns. It ain't over till it's over. No. And we have much more coming up on the Jordan return. We're going to go live to the streets of Chicago. We'll hear from the core of Michael Jordan's fans as he won six NBA titles with the Chicago Bulls. Yeah, then Vince, in the next hour, we're going to take a look at the physiology of a 38-year-old Michael Jordan. Is he healthy enough? Is he too old? But most importantly, we want to hear from you. What do you think of Air Jordan flying once again? Drop us an email. The address is daybreak at CNN.com. Be sure to include your name, where you're from, and we'll have your comments coming up in the next hour. Okay, you're an expert, which is the only reason why I'd ask you. What do you think? What do you think? Do you think this is real? I think it is real. I think Michael would not put this much time and effort if he really wasn't going to come back and play in the NBA. And I think uh, the bigger picture, 
NBA negotiating rights are going on. The TV rights with the networks right now, so the mm -hmm. timing couldn't be better. Ratings had dropped uh, last year. They picked up a little bit in the NBA Finals. But with Michael back, he is the human ratings boost. So I yeah. think it's, uh, it's good all around. Yeah, well, yeah. keep your fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Kira Phillips has the other news today. Morning, Kira. Hi, guys. Good. I can't see Michael Jordan being unhealthy. It just doesn't <laughs> mix. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Well, we got other news stories to talk about. We're going to start in Houston, Texas, where jur jurors will be chosen this morning to decide if a mother accused of drowning her five children is fit to stand trial. The competency hearing for Andrea Yates is expected to begin tomorrow. She's accused of drowning her children June 20th in the bathtub of the family's Houston home. Relatives say Yates has been treated for severe postpartum depression. Elizabeth Dole is expected to announce today that she's running for the U.S. Senate in North Carolina. Dole will make the announcement in her hometown of Salisbury. The seat is being vacated by Senator Jesse Helms. Dole has headed the Departments of Transportation and Labor and is former president Thank of the American Red Cross. Iraq is claiming it has shot down a second U.S. spy plane, but so far reports from Baghdad make no mention of any pilot. The plane reportedly went down near the southern Iraqi city of Basra, and the Pentagon confirms it has lost contact with an unmanned plane. Two weeks ago, Iraq said it shot down another unmanned spy plane. The U.S. admitted the loss, but said the plane may have crashed on its own. Well, those 64 stem cell lines now used by researchers worldwide may not be enough to support future research. That's the word from the National Academy of Sciences. And CNN medical correspondent Elizabeth Cohen is here now to explain. Elizabeth, let's start with why yeah, the scientists believe that they need more. Well, they say that there are several limitations of the stem cell lines that are out there. For example, they say that eventually they're going to get old and they could, have, they could start to contain genetic mutations. Now, that would be a problem because you can't make the kind of treatments that you want to make with genetic mutations. Another problem, they say, is that these 64 lines were made using mouse cells. These stem cells needed to eat something, so they gave them mouse cells to eat. That also would be a problem when people want to turn these stem cells into actual medical treatments for human beings. So the National Academy of Sciences says we need more stem cell lines than just the 64 that President Bush approved for federal funding, and those also need to have federal funding. Elizabeth, why did Bush have a limited number anyway? These scientists told him even beforehand, right, that they would need more. Oh, absolutely. They told him that over and over, that they really needed as, as many as they could get. So what happened was that President Bush was under enormous pressure from both sides. Scientists said, give us as many stem cell lines as we could create, which could be in the thousands. However, folks who were opposed to the destruction of embryos said scientists shouldn't be given any stem cell lines at all because for every stem cell line, an embryo had to be destroyed. The way that you make a stem cell line is you take an embryo that's sitting in a fertility clinic, you destroy it, and you get the stem cells that are inside it. So folks who were against the destruction of embryos said we shouldn't have any. So this was the way that President Bush compromised. I will have much more coverage on this report throughout the day. Elizabeth Cohen, thank you so much. In other news, a lawyer for Anne Marie Smith is refiling his complaint that Gary Condit obstructed justice. A grand jury in California rejected the first complaint, saying it did not have proper jurisdiction. The complaint says Condit asked Smith to sign a false affidavit. Well, her lawyer says he'll refile in a different jurisdiction. High-speed crash test results are due out this morning for one of the most popular vehicle categories, SUVs. The Insurance Institute is set to announce its findings at 10 Eastern, and CNN does plan live coverage. CNN's Kathleen Koch will be at the test site in Virginia with what's left of those crashed SUVs. All right, Vince, take it back over to you. All right, thank you, Kira. And, of course, we're talking about the Michael Jordan comeback, a huge story in particular in our nation's capital, where he will play for the Washington Wizards. Let's see how it's playing out there. Reporter Nancy Weiner of CNN affiliate WJLA is there at a diner, no less, in the nation's capital. And Nancy, uh, what's the feedback you're getting there? Well, Vince, a lot of Washingtonians are telling us they feel like they have won the lottery. As you may know, the Wizards didn't have quite a stellar year last year, and so when Jordan first announced that he would become a part owner, people were thrilled. Now that it turns out that he will almost certainly become a player, they are ecstatic. We have been here at Bob and Edith's in Arlington all morning long, talking to people who say they're so happy, they are more than welcoming him to this team. And come down here, because I want to introduce you to actually two people who say... He shouldn't come back for sentimental reasons. First, we've got Mark Reed from Temple Hills. Mark, why shouldn't he come back if he wants to? Basketball season's a long season. Games are 48 minutes, and he's going to have to chase guys like Kobe Bryant around. Michael needs to stay out. 
Now he says even though he's 38 years old, he's feeling like he's in good enough shape to come down, and I'm sure a lot of Wizards fans would agree with him, but you stick firm. Yeah, he, 38 years old, tired legs, young legs he's gonna chase, mm. nah. No? Nah. I want to introduce you to Pat Petro. He's from Fredericksburg, Virginia. Pat, what do you think? I think he should go out and stay out. Mm -hmm. uh, he's on top, and you know, he's suffering injuries now, and he's not going to get any better. Mm -hmm. He's going to be suffering a little bit more. Ironically, a number of people who like Michael Jordan so much, they want him to leave on an up note. However, I should tell you, Vince, in fairness to his airness, that a number of people who we've spoken to this morning say they're thrilled that he's coming back. They think he can make a great comeback, especially since he made such a phenomenal comeback the first time. All right, thank you very much, Nancy Weiner. Interesting reaction out of Washington, D.C. there. Yep. You know, stay away. This for a team that won only 19 games last year. I yeah. think Michael can be a great addition for the team and certainly for the league. Don't challenge him. One thing we've learned over the years, you challenge Michael Jordan, you're challenging the wrong person. I think he'll answer. All right. Well, he certainly is speaking loud and clear this morning. In the meantime, the story of the day, of course, mm -hmm. Michael Jordan's return to the NBA, and we want to know what you think about it. That's our question of the day, and now it's your turn, so drop us a line at daybreak at CNN.com. Be sure to include your name and where you're writing from, and we'll read those a little bit later in the hour. That's right. We're going to get your emails in the 8 o'clock Eastern hour, so stay tuned. Stay right there. Or you can head over to our website and make your voice heard right there, right now. Go to CNN.com and cast your vote. That's uh, wow. today's quick vote question. What's it saying right now? Look at now? that. 66% agree with the diner eaters. Yeah. You Stay know, away. I don't no. Know. He's taking a big risk. You know, I want to remember Michael in his absolute See, prime. I know you said that earlier today, and I think part of the sentimentality is seeing him shoot against the Utah Jazz. Final shot, boom, for the championship. And we want to remember our legends that way. But, you know, Michael says it's uh, not necessarily about championships. For love of the game. Yeah. That's what he's saying. All right. Well, you know, he's a baby boomer who, do, who doesn't want to admit it's <laughs> over. And he's got a lot left to give. We are all over this story. Our opinions aside, in the next uh, 15 minutes, we're going to be talking to the Sports Illustrated reporter who first reported months ago that MJ was mm -hmm. coming back. And President Bush would like the economy to bounce back. Can he make choices that won't cut into his political base? And cuts are all the rage on the runway. Jeannie Most reports on the fashionistas. You are watching CNN Live at Daybreak. Strike a pause. <laughs> CNN Live at Daybreak is brought to you by Conoco. At Conoco, we think big and move fast. global energy business, no one covers more ground than the fast cats. Conoco, think big, move fast. Would you like to lower your monthly mortgage payments or use the equity in your home to consolidate your credit card or other debts? Just log on to Ditech.com or call 1-800-71-FIXED. Today's low fixed rate with zero points is only 6.875%. Lower interest rates, lower monthly payments. It's smart money from Ditech.com. For fast, friendly service, apply online or call 1-800-71-FIXED right now. In other news, jury selection begins today in a hearing to decide if a Houston woman, Andrea Yates, is mentally competent to stand trial for killing her five children. Forensic psychiatrist Donald Morgan has testified in similar cases, including the Susan Smith case, and he joins us this morning. Good morning, Dr. Morgan. Good morning. I know that you don't have any clinical experience with Andrea Yates, but we want to draw on your past experience with juries as this jury is, uh, be, is being selected today. In the case of Andrea Yates, she has already been evaluated by several doctors, so why is it still a question whether she's competent to go to trial? 
competency to go to trial uh, is a legal issue, and uh, she must have a rational and factual understanding of the proceedings, and she must be able to assist her lawyer so that there can be a disagreement between both the prosecutor and the defense as to whether she can do that. And it appears that there was some confusion and discrepancies between these doctors who first uh, analyzed Andrea Yates uh, while she's been in prison. What sort of confusion would there be well, about two her state people, of mind? Two people can take the same set of facts and see them differently uh, based on uh, all the records and all of their interviews. So it, it's quite possible to have two different opinions uh, from very reputable forensic psychiatrists. Mm -hmm. Dr. Morgan, you were just getting into this, the standard of what is competent. What does the jury have to decide here about Andrea Yates? They have to decide that she's capable of understanding what's going on in the courtroom and that she's able to assist her lawyers. Uh, does that have, so that really has more to do with her state of mind today and not her state of mind during the act of killing children? Correct. It's only for today. It's her state of mind right now today. The other, what her state of mind uh, during the incident, that's a totally different uh, subject. A totally different matter. All right. Uh, family is being called to testify during this competency hearing. What sorts of questions are they likely to be asked? They'll be asked about uh, how they see her now, uh, how she relates to them uh, when they visit her in prison, uh, how she is compared to what she would be normally. And, and as far as her medical history, I mean, she was treated for depression in 1999. She uh, was also diagnosed with postpartum psychosis, and she had a series of suicide attempts. How is that likely to play into this? this issue of whether she is competent to stand trial. Well, that'll set a, that sets some background to talk about her being mentally ill, but really it has nothing to do with how she is today. Uh, how her functioning is today is the real question, not her history in the past. And if, 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 if she, and I, we, you don't know this to be a fact, but if she was incompetent at the time of her arrest, she could also be receiving treatment during her jail time leading up to this hearing that would, in effect, make her competent to stand trial. They could get her in enough of a good shape mentally to actually stand trial. Is that correct? That's correct. And that's the usual case. That is the usual case. All that right. is the usual case. People who have mental illness are able to be restored to competency. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Donald Morgan, forensic psychiatrist, for joining us. Vince? Well, lots of people have some big concerns about the direction of the economy. We'll talk about them with one of the president's top men that's just ahead. And remember when Michael Jordan said he was done with the game of basketball? Well, it seems the game plan is a change in. Looks like the comeback is on. Hi ho, hi ho, it's off to work we go. Hi ho, hi ho. If you want happy employees, help secure their financial futures. At the Principal Financial Group, that's what we do. We're the 401k leader and offer financial solutions for you and growing businesses. The Principal Financial Group, we understand what you're working for. If you don't have the best security, do you really have any? We're number one in e-business security software. Hello, tomorrow. We are Computer Associates. Is he the best CEO of our time? GE's Jack Wells joins us to talk about his career and his new book. Plus, what makes Tyco International run like a top? We'll ask CEO Dennis Kozlowski on Lou Dobbs Moneyline. Tonight, 6 Eastern on CNN. This is a complete broadband solution with a nitro-powered on switch. This is igniting your mission-critical applications on the fattest optical IP pipe on the planet. This is your business, screaming a thousand times faster than yesterday. This is moving beyond connected. This is riding the light. This is the technology that makes it happen. Quest, ride the light. Oh, no, 
We've got this e-business thing nailed. We know exactly what our customers want. And we streamlined our supply chain so we could get it to them fast. We're in Belgium. Our overseas operation. How do you do it? Follow me. Now don't freak out. Please. No pictures. You can do anything with the Black Rocket. The e-business network platform from Genuity. In other matters today, the House Budget Committee meets in about two hours, trying to keep one step ahead of a faltering economy and a president criticized for dealing with it inadequately. Congressional Republicans are putting together spending cuts in case they're needed to show support for Social Security. With more on President Bush's priorities in the current battle of the budget, we go to CNN's John King. The president's strategy for now is to watch and listen. Going to Florida today. Mr. Bush had hoped the economy would get a jolt from his big tax cut and the Federal Reserve's interest rate cuts. But many nervous Republicans in Congress say it is time to do more. He'll have to look at these uh, other options, and uh, I think it's important that he hear from others what we recommend in the process. One idea gaining steam is a temporary cut in Social Security payroll taxes. That would put more money in workers' pockets immediately but also mean less money in the Social Security Trust Fund down the road. It would uh, undermine one of the long-run uh, objectives of policy right now, which is to strengthen the Social Security system so that it can pay benefits to the baby boomers when they retire. Cutting capital gains taxes is another idea. It will clearly cause a growth in the economy. It always does. And as an aside, it brings in more revenue to the government. But Democrats say cutting capital gains taxes would, for the most part, benefit businesses and wealthy investors and would love the chance to argue that the president's first instinct in a tough economy was to help the rich. We want there to be a formula to get us out of this mess. Any one thing is not going to do it. It's not, you know, we can cut spending, that's not going to do it. We can lower taxes, that's not going to do it. One urgent Bush priority is keeping a promise not to tap the Social Security Trust Fund to pay the government's bills. Spending cuts likely will be necessary to keep that from happening in the current fiscal year, which ends September 30th, and the administration is in negotiations with key members of Congress. There's also talk about a budget rule that would automatically force spending cuts next year, if necessary, to keep that Social Security money off limits. John King, CNN, the White House. With more on President Bush's priorities in the current battle of the budget and on the state of the economy, we're joined by his Secretary of Commerce, Don Evans, this morning. Good morning, Mr. Secretary. Good morning, yes. Carol. How are you? Very well. Thanks for joining us this morning. Let's you start bet. with the very beginning. The tax cut has been passed. The checks are still going out. What other ammunition does President Bush have right now to stimulate this economy? Well, the National Energy Plan that he presented to Congress this last spring, Carol, needs to be passed. I mean, the President when he took office January of uh, 2001, he talked about tax cuts first. He talked about a national energy plan. You pass a national energy plan, that will bring down energy prices. That will stimulate the economy. That will put more dollars, more disposable income in the hands of the American people. Also, trade promotion authority, which gives the president authority to, to negotiate trade agreements all around the world. When I talk to American businesses across America, they tell me how important it is that we open up markets for them around the world. There are 130 free trade agreements in the world today. America is only party to two of those. So those are two initiatives, the National Energy Plan as well as Trade Promotion Authority. They're still in Congress that needs to be passed. Mr. Secretary, uh, for all intents and purposes, that is a long and winding road for many Americans who are sitting down to breakfast and watching themselves lose their jobs and watching their portfolios go down. In terms of immediate relief, would you recommend, uh, for example, a cut in the capital gains tax? Carol will continue to watch these numbers very closely. The president is very concerned about the economy. He's very concerned about the rising unemployment rate. Uh, he will continue to listen to his economic advisors. They will continue to present options to him, ideas to him as to ways to further stimulate this economy. As you mentioned, the tax cut rebates are still going out. And so are, are those 
rebates helping the economy? You bet they are. How mm -hmm. much? It's hard to tell. But Mr. Secretary, but I'm it? really trying to pin you down on some specific ideas that Republicans on the Hill are talking about. For example, a cut in the capital gains tax right now. It's uh, if, you, if you sell a stock and you make a profit and you're in the highest tax bracket, that's a 20 percent tax that you pay to the federal government. By lowering that, the theory is that you get people to unload some of their stocks, take some profits, stimulate the economy, and the federal government gets some money to boot. Carol, the president will remain open-minded to these ideas. The president's a good listener. He'll continue to listen. He's an extraordinary leader. He'll lead this economy back to recovery. He'll lead this economy back to the growth rates that are acceptable to him, which are in the th three and a half percent range. We're not there now. The rates we're, we're seeing now are unacceptable. But the specifics, it's just he hasn't made a decision yet. What about uh, reducing taxes on payroll? Again, he'll be open-minded. I mean, you know, there's a whole array of ideas I'm sure that will be presented to him. Those are a couple of them. There will be others. He'll consider those. He'll talk to and l listen to not only his advisors, he'll talk to leadership on the Hill, make decisions on down the road based on how the economy looks at the time. We have more important data that will come out this Friday. More data will continue to come out on the economy in the weeks and months ahead, and he'll make decisions at the appropriate time. Are you concerned that Alan Greenspan is listening as well? Should he have moved more quickly in interest rate cuts, and should he move quickly again? Well, the, uh, the chairman has done a terrific job. I mean, uh, interest rates have come down some 300 basis points over the last seven or eight months. But to little uh, effect. Moved from 6.5% to 3.5%. You know, the, I'm going to, uh, you know, the, the, the chairman has a good a good sense of this economy and I'll leave it to him to decide where interest rates should be. Donald Evans, it sounds like a lot of decisions still to be made by this administration. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Don Thank Evans, you, Secretary of Commerce Department. Vince? Well, we're going to go to break now and Michael Jordan, our big story today. He knows how to give the basketball economy a bounce. We'll tell you why the former Bull says he can still be a whiz on the court. Wizards, that is. And in the next hour of CNN Live at Daybreak, one of the biggest dangers in a hurricane may have nothing to do with the storm. We'll be right back. How can you provide for the future of the people who depend on you? With the power of Pacific Life. For over 130 years, Pacific Life has improved the lives of millions with investments, annuities, and insurance. Because careful planning today can help them reach their dreams tomorrow. Discover the power of Pacific Life. America trusts America online to make everything easy. It's just real simple to keep in touch with AOL. Oh, I love hearing you've got mail. Instant messages are so much fun. And now AOL makes it easier to get health information with WebMD. I discovered WebMD. WebMD is America's leading source of health information online. Communities on everything from diabetes to weight loss. Love the chat room. A site that I trust. AOL has got it all. Now's the perfect time to experience America online. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Call 1-800-4-ONLINE. Get to the point with Greta Van Susteren. It's a full half hour of straight questions and straight answers. The Point, tonight, 8.30 Eastern on CNN. Are you one of the millions of American males who would like increased sexual energy? If you've been considering Viagra as a solution, consider something different. All natural Enerx. Clinical studies show various ingredients of Enerx enhance sexual energy, increasing desire, performance, and satisfaction. EnerX is all natural with no side effects. With EnerX, you'll feel the increased energy within minutes and with no chemicals. We're so sure you and your mate will be completely satisfied. We'll offer you a 30-day, no questions asked, full refund. EnerX stimulates sexual energy by expanding the blood vessels, causing increased blood flow to specific areas of the body. Unleash the power of EnerX now. Call 1-800-367-3614 toll-free, and it will be delivered discreetly to your home. Get results using the safe all-natural alternative, NRX. Larry King Live, tonight, 9 Eastern on CNN. Well, I think it's a great thing. He's, uh, I believe he's in shape. He's an excellent player. He's got enough to come back and at least score, you know, a good 20, 21 points a game right now. If he think he can do it, I think he should. And I 
Yeah. You only live once. <laughs> or maybe twice. <laughs> Michael's case. Or maybe three times uh, from Michael Jordan. Uh, those are some reactions from Washington, D.C. as Michael Jordan inches closer to his comeback with the Washington Wizards. And uh, we're following that story all this morning. It's uh, 7.30 here on the East Coast, and this is CNN Live at Daybreak. I'm Vince Gillian. And I'm Carol Lynn, also ahead this hour. Uh, what's ahead for Elizabeth Dole? We're going to talk to our Bill Schneider about her plan to run for Jesse Helm's Senate seat. She makes that announcement official today in her hometown. And uh, we're going to be talking to Bill in about 10 minutes. That's right. And we also, well, we heard from the Washington, D.C. angle of this. How about the streets of Chicago? We'll go there and hear what people are saying about Michael Jordan's return to the NBA as he won six titles as a Chicago Bull. So what do you say we look deeper into this story sure. of Michael Jordan coming back? Why would a 38-year-old man who has everything, the <laughs> titles, the money, the fame, want to return to the physical and emotional stress of the NBA? CNN's Tom Rinaldi spoke with those who watch and play the game. Jordan, open, Chicago with the lead! But that may have been the last shot Michael Jordan will ever take in the NBA. If that's the last image of Michael Jordan, how magnificent is it? It is not the critic who counts. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, who knows his place shall never be with those timid and cold souls who know neither victory nor defeat. Teddy Roosevelt, who wrote those words, never met Michael Jordan. But the words still seem to mark Jordan's mission. Yes, there's a lot to lose when you are already a statue, but Michael Jordan refuses to rush. Thirteen seasons in Chicago, ten scoring titles, five MVPs. He won a championship in each of his last six full seasons. The perfect ending. So why do it? Why risk failure? Why endanger a legacy and a comeback? Perhaps to serve the very same drive and desire that forged the greatest career in NBA history. He left the game, but did the game and its drive and desire leave him? In sports, career postscripts rarely read well. We see Willie Mays as a Met, Joe Namath as a Ram, John Unitas as a Charger. We shake our heads trying to clear the picture. But we also see Lance Armstrong in the Tour de France or Mario Lemieux on the ice, igniting their worlds and shining a glare on their sports all over again. Since retiring, Michael Jordan didn't leave the arena, literally. He could be spotted on occasion in the ozone of an owner's box, peering down from on high in tie and cufflinks. Perhaps he's trying to clear that picture. Perhaps he still has a need for victory again, at the immediate risk of defeat. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Rinaldi. So when the news broke yesterday, fans out in the streets of Georgetown in Washington, D.C., reacting to the news, this is what they had to say. I think it's going to be great. I think it's great for the town, great for the community, and also great for the, uh, the Wizards. And his abilities, obviously, are going to take the team to another level. Uh, at the same time, people be, will be expecting the team to, to become championship caliber. And I don't know if that's possible. He just seems to me the type of guy that, you know, he. Th I think this is going to be an incredible challenge for him, and and you know that's that's probably what he's after. Well, I don't necessarily think it'll be an opportunity for him to tarnish his reputation. I'm sure he knows what he's doing. If he thinks he's, you know, confident enough to come back into the game and play, then I'm sure he's going to do an excellent job. Okay. All right. What do you think of that? I think it'd be great for the league if he comes back. Um, he's never been injured. Two years out. I think he'll still be the best player in the league, no question about it. Are the Wizards now the team? Yeah, anytime you got Michael Jordan on the floor, they, they're going to be the team. And I think when he's out there, they may go from worst to first in no time. Jordan always likes a challenge. He's a competitor. You never lose that competitive, uh, competitive nature. Anytime that he's going to play, it's going to be great. And it's just pure talent. And I don't think that talent just fades or it's just, you know, or he loses it because I think he'll always have it. Well, Jordan's 13 seasons in Chicago certainly endeared him to basketball fans in the Windy City. He's a god there. He has a statue outside the United Center. So how are folks in Chicago accepting the possible return of the court's most exciting player? CNN Chicago Bureau Chief Jeff Flock joining us with that. Good morning, Jeff. 
We're well, not too far from the statue this morning. Mm -hmm. Actually, this is a place called Hoops the Gym, and this is where Michael made his decision. This is where he talked to reporters uh, outside this gym yesterday. It's where he's been working out, and uh, we had an opportunity to get inside this morning when the NBA players are here, and they'll be here in about a half an hour or so, we are told. we got to clear out. Of course, he's been making this decision out of the glare of, of TV cameras. Uh, how are the local uh, 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 newspapers playing it? Take a look at the Tribune this morning. Still very conservative. MJ hints he's returning, says the headline here. Uh, they not buying it yet. Uh, Tribune reporter, not one of those that he talked to yesterday. Uh, obviously, everyone focusing on the first game when he will be back here if, in fact, this, uh, this comeback does come off. We are expecting lines outside the United Center today, and this gym is not too awfully far. It's right next to Michael Jordan's restaurant, 160 Blue, which he, he owns, and uh, the stadium is just on west of here, and they're expecting lines outside the stadium for that first game when Michael returns to Chicago as a member of the Wizards, if indeed that that's the way it goes. That's the latest from here. Back to you. All right. Thank you very much, Jeff Flock. You know, it's just a shame that this comeback didn't stay in Chicago. I think it, you know, that Michael Jordan is so Chicago. It's, uh, it's unfortunate that, you know, those fences kind of have been broken down. All right. Thank you very much, Jeff. <laughs> I think we lost audio or Jeff is yeah. just kind of digesting the moment. Perhaps he just agreed. Perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps I shouldn't have followed up with a question. <laughs> Perhaps we can ask what you think. It is Perhaps your we turn. Perhaps should move on. <laughs> we are asking you this morning what you think of Michael Jordan's return to the NBA. So, You know what? You can drop us a line at daybreak at CNN.com. Be sure to include your name, where you're writing from. We want to hear from you. So what do you think about this? This is big news. And we'll get to those emails in the 8 o'clock Eastern hour. Yeah, maybe we'll hear from Jeff then, too. Sure. All right. Let's go to David Hafenreffer, <laughs> though, and talk biz. David, I don't know that this is a big enough story to have an impact on stocks, but any good news is better than nothing at all? It isn't, but, uh, you know, from a business perspective, they'll pack the stadium and they'll also get a bunch of advertisers you if uh, Mr. Jordan returns, which is be a boon for any advertiser at that. Uh, good morning to you both. We could very well see an advance in the stock market when trading gets underway in uh, roughly two hours' time this morning. That is the good news. Both the NASDAQ and S&P futures are trading higher. Topping our business headlines this morning include uh, Walt Disney is reportedly ready to use all of its lobbying power, and indeed it is quite a might. In in Washington to block any deal between AOL and AT&T's cable TV unit. News reports say if a deal is signed, Disney will demand that AOL sell off all of its content holdings. That would include HBO and this very network, CNN. In earnings news, ketchup maker H.J. Hines posting a slight decline in quarterly profit from a year ago. The company partly blames lower demand from fast food restaurants. And high-end department store Neiman Mark is posting a wider-than-expected loss for the quarter. After the close of trading yesterday, drug maker Pfizer gave investors some guidance. The company said earnings for this year and next are on track. And United Healthcare reaffirmed numbers for 2001, the second largest U.S. managed healthcare company, also slightly raised estimates for 2002. And that is the latest business news. CNN Live at Daybreak returns after this. Financial News Update is brought to you by Morgan Stanley, formerly Morgan Stanley Deed Winner. Move your money, get well connected. Log on to CNNFN.com slash financial news, your quick source for financial headlines. The rules for making money have changed. Pinstripes, wingtips, that's not how it works anymore. Anybody can be the next big wheel, as long as they put their money in a better place. Welcome to the new Old Boys Club. Less old, less boys. Morgan Stanley. Move your money. Get well connected.
Now's the best time to join America Online. Plug it in and you go. Because now you can try AOL and get our best offer ever. 1,000 hours of AOL free for 45 days. You don't need a credit card. Call 1-877-265-0200 to get everything AOL offers. You've got mail. I've got mail. I love when an instant message pops up. Customer service is always there to help. To get online in minutes plus 1,000 free hours, call 1-877-265-0200. Operators are standing by. If we could do it, anyone can. America Online. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. We're talking about another comeback today as well in the political circles. Big news coming out of North Carolina. Elizabeth Dole is expected to announce she's running for the Senate seat being vacated by Jesse Helms. So let's go to CNN senior political analyst Bill Schneider for some insights on a Dole candidacy. Good morning, Bill. Good morning. All right, so she's going to make it official this afternoon. Elizabeth Dole going home to Salisbury, North Carolina to officially announce. Uh, by That's her right. going back to Salisbury, her re-registering, uh, her, her putting her voter registration in North Carolina, does this eliminate the carpetbagger issue, do you think? Well, it doesn't entirely eliminate it, but look, she was born and raised in North Carolina, lived there a lot of her life. She went to Duke University. Now, she has lived in Kansas and most of the time in Washington for the last three decades, but I think North Carolinians recognize her as a native North Carolinian, unlike, say, Hillary Rodham Clinton, who, when she moved to New York, had never lived or worked there before. Has she had that conversation yet with Senator Jesse Helms? Does she have his support? I don't think he's explicitly given her his support, but he, he, she has indicated that she uh, is interested in running for his seat. There is at least one other important contender in the Republican primary race in North Carolina, uh, Richard Vinroot, the former mayor of Charlotte, who has run for governor unsuccessfully twice, so he's known statewide. Uh, at this point, it's not clear uh, what Jesse Helms is going to do, but one thing is very clear, and that's that the Republican National Committee was pleased and delighted to see Elizabeth Dole run because she's a celebrity and they want the Republicans to hold on to this seat. Yeah, and very charming. People who have met her in person know how persuasive she can be. Is it going to be a very different sort of race than the kind of race, the kind of campaign she ran when she ran for president? Sure. It's a local campaign, and you've got to make sure local people whom you might not have met or have no relations with, uh, that they know you, they feel that they can call you. The Republican primary in North Carolina is a very small affair, maybe 300,000 voters. A lot of them are very hardcore conservative. Uh, conservatives, she's got to make sure she doesn't offend them. A lot of Christian conservatives in North Carolina, gun owners, she's got to build some fences and make some friends where she really doesn't know a lot of people. All right. Well, what do you think is going to be the, the culminating issue, do you think, in her campaign? Are there any controversies lurking for Elizabeth Dole in North Carolina? Well, I think the biggest issue of all for next year is likely to be the economy unless things dramatically improve. And that uh, means that even though she's a celebrity and the polls are showing her far ahead right now in both the primary and the general election, if the economy continues to uh, uh, drop, uh, and people are angry at the president, angry at the Republicans, want to make a statement, then every Republican contender is going to be in some trouble, including Elizabeth Dole, including Jeb Bush, the president's brother, who looks pretty strong right now. They're all going to be in some trouble. Uh, we'll have to see what happens with the economy before we can make a real judgment. Okay, and certainly we'll be watching this afternoon. Elizabeth Dole making that announcement at 1 p.m. Thanks so much, Bill Schneider. Good to see you. And we just want to let the viewers know that actually Senator Jesse Helms is going to be a guest this Saturday on Hunt, Novak, and Shields. I hope I got everybody's name in there this Saturday. Is it 5 or 5.30, folks? 5.30 in the afternoon. Stay tuned. Vince? Good pickup. <laughs> and you can't fight fashion, can you? From the, one re the runways, rather, to the magazines to the stores next spring, we'll give you the skinny from New York on what's in vogue. Don't get dressed without it. Hey, now. Among the highest number of graduates in computer science and engineering in the country, over 4,700 graduates in computer and information sciences, over 5,000 graduates in engineering, including chemical and bioengineering, and they all graduated from the same place. Just who produces this kind of talent for the workforce each and every year? Pennsylvania. My name is Mac Maharaj. During my long imprisonment with Nelson Mandela on Robben Island, all news was forbidden. However, we obtained The Economist under the pretense that we needed it for our study of economics. The authorities later discovered their mistake 
and the subscription ended. Today, we're free to read what we choose. What kind of beer you got? A food? Anything else? Haydn's Cello Concerto in C major. Which performance? Gorski, Yachting, or Chin? How's that possible? Our jukebox is every performance by every artist of every piece of music ever recorded. This is the technology that makes it happen. This is Riding the Light. Quest. Would you like to lower your monthly mortgage payments or use the equity in your home to consolidate your credit card or other debts? Just log on to Ditech.com or call 1-800-71-FIXED. Today's low fixed rate with zero points is only 6.875%. Lower interest rates, lower monthly payments. It's smart money from Ditech.com. For fast, friendly service, apply online or call 1-800-71-FIXED right now. The U.S. government, the economy, and you. From a capital gains tax cut, a payroll tax cut, to spending the budget into a deficit, what should lawmakers do? CNN Tonight, 10 Eastern. Welcome back to CNN Live at Daybreak. I'm Dave Hennon in the CNN Weather Center. Our attention on Florida today. That's where most of the heavy rain is expected. Flooding yesterday reported into uh, downtown Miami and uh, more problems anticipated today. They had a couple of inches of rain, uh, nearly three inches of rain spots of the Miami metro area yesterday. Not too much precipitation right now, but there is this area of low pressure uh, that is located uh, off the coast. In fact, the National Hurricane Center watching that for possible tropical development, saying, that even if it doesn't develop into a tropical uh, depression or a tropical storm, it is still going to produce copious amounts of rain. And that's because that's why we have uh, flash flood watches covering again much of South Florida, not only today, but right on through into Thursday is what the uh, forecast office in Miami is saying. So the potential for flooding here for the next couple of days. Here's Aaron uh, moving to the north and if anything, actually looking a little bit stronger this morning. It is forecast though to continue to turn away from land. This looks like it will come push out into the North Atlantic over the next couple of days. And uh, Tropical Depression number seven, it has not been named yet, may uh, be named later on today. Very close to tropical storm strength. Winds at 35 miles per hour. It looks like this storm is going to go to the north. So both storms appears. No threat to land at this time. That's the latest. We'll have more next hour, Vince. All right, thank you very much, Dave. And as we go to break, we want to remind you that Jeannie Mose will be along with her Fashion Folly story. It's part of her take of Fashion Week taking place in New York. We'll talk about that and much more. Live at Daybreak continues. We've got this e-business thing nailed. We know exactly what our customers want. And we streamlined our supply chain so we could get it to them fast. We're in Belgium. Our overseas operation. How do you do it? Follow me. Now don't freak out. Please, no pictures. You can do anything with the Black Rocket, the e-business network platform from Genuity. Victory is measured in miles, minutes, and if you're really lucky, hugs. Achieve new balance. CSFB Direct. Ranked as the number one online broker by Barron's and backed by the resources of Credit Suisse First Boston. That's the difference between online trading and direct investing from CSFB Direct.
In the global energy business, no one covers more ground than the fast cats. Conoco, think big, move fast. when you retire. Conseco offers a wide variety of retirement products that can help. Conseco, step up. Burden of Proof, weekdays, 1230 Eastern on CNN. Hi, my name is Anika Rabi. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, and I would like to ask CNN, how does an aspiring model become a model? The ways in which one can become a model are endless. A girl can be scouted at the mall, walking down the street, working as a waitress in a restaurant. Someone can just send their pictures into an agency. They can go to a modeling convention. It's just any way that anyone can see you. We at Click look for girls who are minimum at 5'9 and under 21 to begin. And we can find those girls everywhere. And what we ask them to do is either to send in their Polaroids or send in their snapshots so that we can get a line of their body and their bone structure. Ask CNN is brought to you by Sir Speedy Printing Copying Digital Network. For outstanding document solution and the center near you, visit sirspeedy.com. Business. E-business. Sir Speedy Printing. Sirspeedy.com. Face-to-face. Online interface. Personal. Productive. Local. Global. Very human. Very modern. Easy. Easy. Sir Speedy. Either way. A gospel musician who promotes adoption in his work and his songs. Well, he is being honored this evening. Too good to be true. You've heard about a place called home. But there doesn't seem to be one for you. Stephen Curtis Chapman and his wife Mary Beth founded an organization called Shohana's Hope. The group helps families who want to adopt. And tonight, he receives the Congressional Angels in Adoption Award, along with Wendy's Dave Thomas and Rosie O'Donnell. And he is with us now live in Washington. Good morning. All right, I hope we can hear you. Did you lose your voice? Uh, I sort of did. Oh. About, two, about two days ago, my voice kind of started to go away, which was not good timing. No, because um, you're going to be debuting a song tonight, When Love Takes You In. Right. Uh, fortunately, I've got the, the video. We're going to watch the video because <laughs> I'm afraid it would be too painful for everybody to try to listen to me sing it. But well, not at all. It's, it's good to be, be here. To, good to see you. Tell me how you heard about the award. You know, it's really odd. My wife and I were in China just about a month ago, uh, our second trip back. We, we were there a year and a half ago to adopt a wonderful little girl, precious little seven-month-old girl we named Shohanna. And uh, she's been kind of contagious in our hometown of Nashville. Lots of our friends and family and people that have been around her have said, hey, we want to find out about this. And they start checking into it. Next thing we know, we're going back to China with them to bring home a few more babies. And uh, we were there, and I met a man who is kind of connected and, and had some relationships with some of the people on the Congressional Coalition on Adoption. And he began to tell them about us and what we were doing. And next thing we knew, we had a call and said, would you come to Washington, D.C.? We want to give you an award and recognize you as an angel in adoption. I've never been an angel before, <laughs> so this is kind of exciting. And uh, so that's why we're here. It is exciting. You know, for all those people out there who might be thinking about making the same decision as you, how did you make the decision to adopt a child? You know, it's really, our story is so fun. I wish I had lots of time to tell you, but my, we have a, three other biological children. Our daughter Emily is 15. I have a 10 and 11 year old boys, Will and Caleb. And um, our daughter Emily began to talk about this when she was 12 or 13 years old about needing a little sister. And uh, 
she began actually to pray about it, which is kind of what we do with all of the big things going on in our lives. And, uh, and things began to happen when our daughter, even though we didn't really, we knew we wanted to support mm -hmm. and be involved in the adoptive process with other families, and we had been for several years. Because a lot of families and a lot of couples worry that they might not love their adoptive child as much as they might their own biological kids, yeah. and that when that adoptive child grows up, that it's not the same kind of relationship. What do you tell people? Exactly. Well, that's that was the greatest fear my wife and I faced. My wife especially being the mom, you know, am I going to be able to love this little girl in the same way? And I can assure you, it is a miraculous thing. Um, the moment that this little girl was placed in our arms, my wife, uh, it was so evident in her eyes and it's only been more and more evident now that we've been with her for a year and a half, she's been a part of our family, that um, she is a part of us. We are a part of her. And uh, it's, it's really a miraculous thing. That's why I'm trying to encourage others to get involved. It's not even so much about what we can do mm -hmm. for the children who are in need uh, all around the world here in our own country, half a million in foster care right now. And um, it's, a, it's something that we get to experience once we open our hearts and our homes uh, to, to a child who needs a home. You know, Stephen Curtis Chapman, it is written all over your face. Have a great time tonight, and I hope your voice gets better. Thank you so much. And we'll learn so much more about adoption through the event. Stephen Thanks. Curtis God Chapman. Bless you. And even our own Judy Woodruff, who is going to be the MC tonight, is an adoptive parent, and she's going to be there as well. We'll be right back. Of a heart, when love takes you home. Blitzer reports on the day's big stories on location and talks one on one with key newsmakers. Wolf Blitzer reports tonight, 8 Eastern on CNN. I'm Lori Farkas for Dish Network FYI. Do you have a certain group of regular television channels that you always watch? Then you should set up a favorites list. To begin, press your menu button and select favorites option. You can create and change the list yourself, adding and removing channels as you wish. When you make your list active, your program guide displays only the channels in that list. There are many ways to customize favorites to suit your needs. Upgrade to America's Top 150 package and take off with Great American Country and Dish Network. You'll receive the Top 150's latest programming edition, Great American Country, the newest 24-hour country music channel, bringing you your favorite superstars, classic artists, and new talent. You'll also be automatically entered to win a trip for two to Nashville. Call 1-800-333-DISH to upgrade today and get more music, better country from Great American Country and Dish Network. Call 1-800-333-DISH now. Are you one of the millions of American males who would like increased sexual energy? If you've been considering Viagra as a solution, consider something different. All natural EnerX. Clinical studies show various ingredients of EnerX enhance sexual energy, increasing desire, performance, and satisfaction. EnerX is all natural with no side effects. With EnerX, you'll feel the increased energy within minutes and with no chemicals. We're so sure you and your mate will be completely satisfied. We'll offer you a 30-day, no questions asked, full refund. EnerX stimulates sexual energy by expanding the blood vessels, causing increased blood flow to specific areas of the body. Unleash the power of EnerX now. Call 1-800-367-3614 toll-free, and it will be delivered discreetly to your home. Get results using the safe, all-natural alternative, NRX. Larry King Live, tonight, 9 Eastern on CNN. It's that time of year again. Fashion designers all gathering in New York to show uh, their next lines up, and they've been strutting their stuff in they New sure York. They sure have. But as CNN's Jeannie Mose reports, some of the most interesting fashions aren't in the shows themselves, but rather outside. It's another eye-popping fashion week, and you don't have to be a happy camper to flock to these tents. Flawless. Flawless. Well, maybe not flawless. 
It's not just the models who have their eyebrows done. Your eyebrows are mesmerizing in this color. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm playing for the fashion crowd. Who isn't? You can bet almost everyone who comes to the shows thinks long and hard about what to wear. It's all stuff from the 50s, including the glasses. And though the most unusual outfits are reserved for the runway, some looks make you want to run away. Whoa, 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 whoa. He wouldn't talk, but young designers hoping to make it big are only too happy to say a few words. The name of the line is called Chan Paul. Okay, in one word. And my name is Paul Chan. Paul Chan says Chan Paul looks good as a logo. Entrance to the shows is by invitation only. I didn't get in. But Kim Cattrall did. The actress from Sex and the City was all smiles at the Patricia Field show. <laughs> Pat Field is the stylist for Sex and the City, so maybe someday we'll see Cattrall's character in one-legged trousers with leg irons. We understand why the editor of Vogue attends the shows, but an editor from National Geographic? The magazine has done a fashion book. This is fashion around the world and fashion through times. Read about outfits made of reeds, or South Pacific Islanders wearing fish, or this towering turban from Burkina Faso. A former UN diplomat wears different outfits with the same theme throughout Fashion Week. Zebras one day, stripes the next. I have a veritable zoo in my closet. You name it, I have it. In one sense, fashion has reached new lows. Yeah, they're Brazilian. It's like the latest trend. I've got lower ones, but I didn't Do you really? scare. I didn't want to scare the New Yorker. I mean, these are really low jeans. Mm -hmm. I mean, you and have to practically shave. Yeah. You have to shave? Yeah. But not the guy in the low riders with the lace up fly. I no, I don't have that hairy problem. The laces go on the shoes, not on the crotch. <laughs> You're never too young to be fashionable. Let's see, let's see these shorts you got on. Oh, Ralph Lauren, nice, very nice. Some guys like to let the band of their underwear show. That's his own little fashion trend because it's his diaper, it's not underwear. Lo and behold. Jeannie Mo, CNN, New York. Well, now that Jeannie has hit below the belt this morning, we're going to have <laughs> CNN's Gail O'Neill, former model. She's going to be reporting on the ins and outs of Fashion Week in the next hour. We love fashion. We love serving you. CNN Live <laughs> at Daybreak continues right now. This is CNN. No bull. Michael Jordan hints he'll return to the court, this time as a Washington Wizard. Extensive coverage in this hour. There is something in the air. It is 8 a.m. in Salisbury, North Carolina, 7 a.m. in Chicago, 5 a.m. in Calaveras County, California, where the news is being made on this Tuesday, September 11th. From CNN Center in Atlanta, this is CNN Live at Daybreak. Good morning, I'm Vince Cellini. And I'm Carol Lynn. And we have lots to talk about mm -hmm. in this next hour. Lots of sports stuff, so I'm feeling good. Uh, it's been three years since Michael Jordan played in the NBA, June of 98, in fact. And he's got some knee troubles, so he's a little bit older. Some wonder if he has what it takes to make the grade in the NBA. We'll talk about that as he plans this comeback. That's right, and at a time when government is shrinking, the U.S. Capitol is expanding, you're going to be talking to former Senator John Glenn about this new model of this visitor center, which at times was controversial, but I think it's kind of exciting that it's going to finally open up. It really is. You know, the Capitol building is a 19th century building. I think it might be time for some renovation to get visitors in yeah, there. Yeah, time so to remodel. It's a great project. Uh, but right now, we want to get a look at weather. Dave Hennon is with us. Dave, what do you got? Hi, Dave. Good morning, Carol Vince. Uh, watching Florida, that's where the problem area is expected again to Today. We certainly saw it yesterday. Much of South Florida uh, saw some flooding yesterday. More heavy rains in the forecast today. Here's the radar. If you look very closely, see this counterclockwise circulation. That is an area of low pressure that is uh, located in the Gulf of Mexico, being watched very closely by the National Hurricane Center for possible tropical development over the next couple of days. Flash flood watches in place again today over much of South Florida, including the Miami uh, area. We saw the flooding yesterday over two to three inches of rain uh, in Miami, and we are looking at uh, more additional heavy rain today. Elsewhere, pretty quiet today. Beautiful weather, Midwest, Northeast. We'll check the tropics, uh, too. Talk about that with the next forecast in a few minutes. Vince? Okay, thanks, Dave. Now, on the comeback trail, it looks like Michael Jordan will be back on the court this fall. The former Chicago Bulls star expected to announce that he's coming out of retirement at age 38 to play for the NBA's Washington Wizards. Chicago Tribune syndicated columnist Bob Green wrote Hang Time and Rebound, books about Michael Jordan, and Bob Green is with us in Chicago this morning. Good morning. 
Morning. You're also the author of a new book, Duty, A Father, A Son, and A Man Who Won the War. And I know you're on a book tour. We appreciate you stopping by. Bob, when you heard all this comeback talk, out of retirement talk, did it give you an indication that Michael would indeed come back? What were your thoughts? Well, he is always, you know, everyone talks about that last shot he win, he hit <laughs> to win the sixth championship as, as the perfect memory. But that's our memory. That's not his. And uh, anytime I used to talk to Jordan about the concept of legacy, he would repeat the word almost as an obscenity, legacy. He says, I don't have a legacy, I have a life. And when he was retired the first time and playing baseball, and the Bulls were playing in Chicago at the United Center, there were many nights that Jordan would be two miles away downtown with a bunch of guys in their 40s in a health club playing pickup games. So it may be something just as simple as he wants to play basketball. Um, the best players in the world play in the NBA, and to get the kind of com competition he wants, that's what he may do. You know, when Michael retired, he talked about, you know, I can go to carpool now, and I can relax with my family, but yet and still he comes back as an executive and probably as a player. So did Michael kind of try to talk himself into thinking he could walk away from the game? Well, I think for so long the world has said that Jordan is more than a basketball player and Jordan transcends basketball. But the fact is, he is a basketball mm -hmm. player. That's what he is. That's what he loves to do. The guy can't sit still. And the idea of him being an executive, sitting in that executive suite making decisions, I mean, it may have seemed tangentially a good idea for him at the time. Um, the NBA, I think, is going to have a problem with this because no matter what they say publicly about how wonderful this is, and their ratings will be huge when he mm -hmm. comes back, if he comes back. The fact is, David Stern, the commissioner, and the owners have known for a long time that the day is going to come when they have to go on without Jordan. And they've done it twice already. And if he comes back, they're going to smile and welcome him, but they're going to realize, you know, they're just delaying the inevitable. There's going to be a day they have to live without Jordan. But it's not the NBA's decision. It's Michael's decision. And he, so many people for so long have put their own expectations on him. If he does this, I think he's doing it for himself. Absolutely. He, he, wants to, he wants to, you know, in his life, enjoy it. Ultimately, Michael makes decisions, that's right, uh, for himself in that regard. Bob, you know, you, you've got your finger on the pulse there in Chicago. It's sad in a way that it isn't happening in Chicago, that this is happening in Washington. And do you think part of this is Michael trying to stick it to general manager Jerry Krause and the Bulls, a Bulls team he probably should still be a part of? Uh, there's certainly that is a part of it. But while the rest, you're right, while the rest of the world, should this happen, is going to say, isn't it amazing to watch Jordan back on a basketball court again? In Chicago, of course, it's going to be, here's Jordan, and the shirt says Washington on it. Um, <laughs> it's not going to compute real well here, and I think Chicago is going to be sort of watching it through squinted eyes. It's going to be, it's going to be a big international story, should it happen. But locally in Chicago, it's going to be a pretty depressing thing to see. I mean, you've got, you've got the statue of Jordan in front of the United Center. But he told me once that he never even looks at the statue mm. because he says, I'm not a statue, I'm a person. Well, all they have is the statue now. Bob Green, thank you very much for your perspective. We appreciate thank you joining you us much. this morning. Thanks. Thank you. He's not a person. He's a legend. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, you. He's a, such a big deal. He's an icon there in Chicago. Right. No and every 40-year-old man is looking at him going, yo, go. You know what? I could get back in shape. And, I think, <laughs> no. and we'll be there to cover it. And walk a flight of stairs. All right. Let's walk over to Kira Phillips, <laughs> who's taking a look at the news today. Morning, Kira. Hi, guys. Well, we begin in the Middle East this morning, where Israeli tanks surrounded the West Bank town of Jenin earlier today. Gun battles broke out between local gunmen and Israeli forces, leaving several Palestinians wounded. Israel says it sealed Janine because it was the staging ground for dozens of attacks by Palestinian militants. Meanwhile, truce talks tentatively set today between Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat and Israeli Foreign Minister Shimon Peres. They have been postponed. In Australia, a federal judge overturned the government's decision to turn away some 400 asylum seekers. The court says the mostly Afghan migrants now on their way to Papua New Guinea aboard a Navy ship must be allowed to land in Australia. Government officials say they will appeal the court's ruling. Jury selection begins today for a Texas hearing that will determine whether Andrea Yates is fit to stand trial. She's the Houston mother, you may remember, that was accused of drowning her five children in a bathtub in June. She's charged with two counts of capital murder for drowning three of them. Elizabeth Dole is expected to throw her hat into the ring today. She's expected to announce she's running for Jesse Helms' Senate seat in North Carolina. The announcement comes in Salisbury, North Carolina, her hometown. Dole once served as Secretary of Transportation and Secretary of Labor. Her husband, Bob, was defeated in the 1996 presidential race. Next, the safety of children's toys. Consumer advocates say they're not safe enough. They say the biggest danger, children choking to death. 
16 children under 12 died from toy-related injuries in 1999. Nine of them choked to death. Consumer advocates say manufacturers should do more to guarantee toy safety. Well, the governor of California has declared a state of emergency in a county where a wildfire destroyed a water system serving thousands of people. Authorities say the nearly 7,000 acre fire in Calaveras County is 50 percent contained now. So far, none of the county's 7,500 residents has been without water, but they've been asked to conserve. Carolyn Vince. All right, thank you very much. Thanks, Kira. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's your turn, everybody. We are asking what you think of Michael Jordan's return to the NBA. Why don't you drop us a line? What are you waiting for? Daybreak at CNN.com. Be sure to include your name, where you're writing from. We'll get to the emails a little bit later in this hour. I'm interested to see what people have to say. Yeah, make it juicy. In the meantime, you can go to our website and make your voice heard. You can go hmm. to CNN.com and cast your vote and check that out. Wow. Do you think Michael Jordan should return to play in the NBA? And so far, 66% there saying no. I'm surprised, just from a curiosity factor. See him, you, wouldn't you want to see him just take the court one more no, time? No, because you can't replete your first love. You know, I, I just think that people are afraid he's going to stumble, and every time he goes out there, it's going to be three times more embarrassing. Michael's an elite athlete. I think he knows what he's doing. We're he wouldn't see. do this if he didn't have a plan. You know, all the ticket sales through the roof. I mean, it's going to be sold out. Still to come, though. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, this issue of tired of waiting outside in you know, the summer heat or driving rain to see the U.S. Capitol. Soon you won't have to. CNN has an inside look at the Visitor Center renovations. And a little bit later, the eye of the storm getting out of danger might be the most dangerous thing about a hurricane. And get out your hip huggers, Vince. It's day two of Fashion Week here at CNN, and our Gail O'Neill <laughs> is in the middle of it all. You look hot. CSFB Direct. Direct access to six leading independent sources of research and to the top ranked Credit Suisse First Boston analyst reports. That's the difference between online trading and direct investing from CSFB Direct. After nearly a century of lending and leasing, CIT has learned to ride the ups and downs of changing conditions. We've learned to navigate the ins and outs of complex territories. And we've learned that it takes great strength to reach the top. And even greater balance to stay there. Discover why today's business leaders put their trust in today's financing leader, CIT. Hi, Fred. Looks like IT will be jumping through hoops again today. Fred, I sent out an email about the email being down. I opened that virus just like you told us not to. Hi, Fred. Uh, looks like another all-nighter. Sorry. At CDW, we understand what it can be like in IT. That's why you get computing solutions from your highly trained account manager and services designed to make your day a little easier. What's wrong, Fred? We're only asking the impossible. CDW, computing solutions built for business. Somehow Amanda Lang is going to combine my two favorite subjects, food and fashion. How will she tie them both together? I don't know. It's in the news and business. Morning, Amanda. Hi, Amanda. I don't know if you would call this food, though. That's the only problem, Carol. Morning, Oops. Vince. Uh, <laughs> we're looking at uh, stock market futures gaining some ground here. It looks like there could be a nice pop when market action gets going, a little more than an hour. It's catch-up maker Heinz that we're talking about. H.J. Heinz and high-end retailer Neiman Marcus. Uh, we're watching shares of both. Both are out with quarterly results. Heinz posted slightly lower profit from a year ago. Neiman Marcus reported a wider-than-expected loss. Nokia, the world's biggest mobile phone maker, says it expects to meet earnings estimates for the third quarter, and that's helping its shares rally in the pre-market, even though it also warned on sales for the quarter. And Dell is out with some bullish comments. The PC maker says it's well positioned for recovery in the sluggish computer industry. Dell has been one of the leaders in the ongoing computer price war, and in doing so, it has gained market share. 
Finally, cigarette makers Philip Morris, British American Tobacco, and Japan Tobacco have reportedly agreed to pull their TV and radio ads worldwide. The Wall Street Journal says the companies are pledging support to global standards set by the United Nations. That is business news. CNN Live at Daybreak. We'll be right back. Financial news update is brought to you by Key. Achieve anything. There will come a time when your work will end and your life will begin again. When you will be able to live life the way you want to. At Key, we synchronize the right people and the right resources like financial planning, insurance, and brokerage services for McDonald Investments. All to help you achieve your retirement dreams. To schedule a free personal assessment, call a Key Retirement Specialist at 1-888-KEY-2020. Look in my eyes. Tell me what you see. He has a power. I know certain things, see certain things. A power to see the past. You couldn't know? To predict the future. Believe me, I know. And to pass his gift to another. All you gotta do is find the Queen of Hearts. Tell me what you see. This one here. Anthony Hopkins, Hearts in Atlantis, rated PG-13. Sneak preview September 15th, starts September 28th. Driving is a big responsibility, one that deserves your full attention. But a distracted driver is a factor in one out of every four automobile collisions. Don't let food, friends, or a phone call endanger your life. Stay focused and stay alive. Learn to avoid driving's most dangerous distractions from this book. It's free from Shell. Count on Shell. We were in the islands, exploring the only volcano in the world you can bike from top to bottom. It was a place we found on Travelocity. We experienced what it was like to spend a day in the clouds. Great trips stay with you forever. On Travelocity, we'll show you a calendar of choices for the price you want. Because a great fare isn't great if it's not available when you are. Travelocity. Go virtually anywhere. Oh, uh, say, can I have the new software IT didn't approve? Fred, I promised someone remote access. What is remote access? At CDW, we understand what it can be like in IT. That's why we have top name brands in stock, so you get the solutions you need when you need them. Like the entire family of HP network storage products, from single tape drives to automated libraries, with the reliability you expect from HP. Fred, here is another request that can't be done in time. HP and CDW, computing solutions built for business. So if you're a Washington Wizards fan, or heck, if you're an NBA fan, you're probably having a heart attack this morning hearing that Michael Jordan is expected to return to the courts. We're going to go to Washington, D.C., to WTTG reporter Audrey Barnes, who's been hearing it from the street. What are you hearing, Audrey? Well, Carol, reporters from various media outlets stopped Michael Jordan outside his Chicago restaurant last night, and he all but confirmed that he did indeed plan to return to the basketball court wearing a Washington Wizards uniform. He says he'll make an official announcement sometime in the middle of next week. Now, for the last five months, Michael has been putting himself to a very physical test. He's been scrimmaging with the likes of Penny Hardaway, Juwan Howard. He says there's a little bit of tendonitis in his right knee, but other than that, he is ready to go. And Michael says if he does return to basketball, it is because of the love of the game, not his ego, and certainly not for money. Now, the NBA is holding league meetings in Orlando on September 20th, and Michael Jordan is expected to announce his intentions before that. If he should return to basketball, the Wizards say they are prepared for a a flurry of last-minute ticket purchases. Also, plans are already in the works to televise as many Wizard games as possible. Reporting live from the MCI Center, Carol, back to you. Yeah, you can bet on that, Audrey. Thanks so much. Audrey Barnes standing outside the MCA, MCI Center where they're expecting Michael might be playing soon. Michael could be taking the floor over there, no doubt about that. All right, from a basketball legend now to a real American hero. Millions of people visit the U.S. Capitol each year, some standing in line for hours waiting to get inside. And now a multi-million dollar visitor center expansion project is underway to make the Capitol more visitor friendly. Former Senator John Glenn is a spokesman for the project and he's in Washington and joins us now. Good morning, sir. Great to have you. 
Good morning. Glad to be with you. Um, it's interesting to me how you came to uh, be a part of this project. It goes back to your childhood when you were a visitor to our nation's capital. Can you tell us about well, that? Well, it does. You know, when I was about eight years old, uh, I remember our first visit to Washington. I can remember to this day, that's been many years ago <laughs> now, and I remember to this day, though, uh, walking into that capital and looking up at the rotunda and then visiting each of the two chambers, the House and the Senate, and what an impression it made on me as a as a young kid, and and uh, I think it affected somewhat my whole attitude toward government. It, uh, I won't say that led me into the paths of where I went <laughs> later on, but uh, it, it certainly gave me an awareness and an appreciation for the capital and for our country. And I think the four million visitors that come here to the capital each year deserve much better than to stand out in the rain and the cold and and line up across the East Plaza out there. And this rendering that we see here, the artist's conception is uh, what this will eventually look like. You'll have a visitor center in here. They can enter under here. Uh, there will be uh, movies and artifacts and things like that that will be uh, available. It'll be, it'll be th three things, really. Educational, number one for the kids coming in there, and inspirational. And I don't underrate that. I think that's a very important part of this whole thing. And number three, it provides far better security so we don't have uh, some of these incidents like we had where some of the policemen got killed here a few years ago. Right, and that, there certainly are safety issues involved, and I know that there is not only long lines and long waiting and heat for many elderly people, but can you talk about the safety issues as well? Well, the safety issues are a very important one because this will give a more controlled flow than just having people milling around out here on this, on the East Plaza that we have here right now. Uh, there'll be entryways in here that you can go into the Capitol, into the uh, House or the Senate chamber over here. And uh, also another factor, you know, we're a focal point of the whole world. The Capitol building is a symbol of our democracy. We have many foreign visitors come here from all over the world, and most of them want to visit the Capitol. Now, this is a far more impressive and, and a far better way, I think, of taking care of all the visitors, foreign and our own people here as well. Senator Glenn, uh, how much money is needed for this project, and where will this money come from? Well, Congress appropriated $100 million. The, the whole thing is estimated to cost about $265 million. There have been about 35 pledges from corporations so far. We hope to raise a, uh, $100 million from the rest of that $100 million from private sources, and that's what this drive is all about. We hope everybody can, can participate in this. It's, uh, uh, everybody should. Be, you know there's a precedent for this also. Uh, uh, I might have preferred myself to see a, a Congress just appropriate the money and do it. But we have a history, for instance, just a few years ago when they wanted to refurbish the statue on top of the Capitol. That was all done with private funds. So there is some uh, precedent for this. Senator Glenn, do you feel that Washington, D.C. is the tourist attraction or maybe the tourist mecca that it should be? Well, no. Well, I think it is probably the biggest single tourist attraction in this country. Everyone, every family, you know, we have polls that show that I think it's like three-fourths of the people want to take their family to Washington, want their kids to experience coming to this, uh, this capital city, this leadership city for the whole world, literally. And uh, so we're, in a way, we're just responding to what the people of this country already want. Uh, I'd like to see more visitors to Washington also, not just from a, a money standpoint of tourists and business, uh, but for the, the appreciation of what we have here, the capital, Arlington, uh, the monuments, Washington Monument, Lincoln uh, Memorial, mm -hmm. uh, things like that I think are very, very impressive and, and give people a feel of, of their part, their participation in this country when they have a chance to come here and visit. Well, sir, before we go, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about your 1998 space mission. And Can you tell us what was learned uh, from that mission in terms of aging experiments uh, at that time and since? Yeah, some of, the, uh, some of the things are still being looked at from that. What we were up there, what I was up there to see was, you know, that when the younger people go up there, they have uh, certain things uh, happen to their bodies. Osteoporosis sets in. The body's immune system changes, become less resistant to disease and infection. Uh, protein replacement in the muscles uh, changes. Now, those are the same things that happen to the elderly uh, to a large extent right here on Earth. So the idea was to compare my reactions to going into space again with the younger people with the objective of seeing if we can't find out what turns these systems on and off in the human body. And we're making strides in that area too. And the, uh, the idea being not only to permit longer term space flight, but also to take away some of the frailties of old age right here on Earth. That's exciting to think that maybe we opened the door for some things like that. And so uh, the experiments are going on. I'm hoping they'll put more people up there in my age bracket mm -hmm. so we have a database 
in a few years, it means a lot more than just a database of, of one, which is me right now. Well, one, uh, back to the project now, and uh, anyone can get involved. The website, www.capitalvisitorcenter, one word, dot org. Senator John Glenn, a pleasure. Great talking with you. Best of luck with the Thank project, you. sir. Good to see you. Good to talk to you. Thank good you. Good to talk to you. Thank you. God, he's in great shape, isn't he? I'll tell you, he's a legend. Looking good. Looking good. All right, we're going to take another look at another cool science story. Picture this, a massive hurricane, and towns are forced to evacuate. Mm. The problem is there's too much traffic for the roads to handle. Gridlock on the escape route. And who, yeah. maybe it's what, is walking down the runway this spring? We're going to give you a look at the latest fashions when we return. From case court to gavel, join Greta Van Susteren and Roger Cossack for Burden of Proof, today, 1230 Eastern on CNN. Hi, I'm Christy, professional fitness trainer. Like most of my clients and people I know, time for the gym may not always fit into your busy schedule. So when it comes to working trouble areas like your abdominals, we could all use a little extra help. That's why I recommend the Max Tone Exerciser. In just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you can achieve rock-hard chiseled abs. So when you don't feel like fighting traffic and crowds at the gym, sit back, relax, and let the Max Tone Exerciser go to work for you. Say goodbye to sit-ups forever that cause unnecessary strain to the back and neck, and say hello to abs that are absolutely electrifying. And if you call within the next 10 minutes, you'll receive up to $100 off. The Max Tone Exerciser can be used for a variety of health and fitness related needs. You control the intensity of your workout from a complete full body workout to even massaging and bringing comfort to tighten and tense muscles. Order the Maxtone Exerciser now. Call 888-297-1835. That's toll free, 888-297-1835. Talk Back Live, today, 3 Eastern on CNN. Michael Jordan on the rebound. And chaos on the hurricane evacuation route. Welcome back. I'm Carol Lynn. And I'm Vince Cellini. And much ahead in this next half hour, we're going to talk about hurricanes. It's a, the big hurricane season starting up. And running away from that storm may not be the best idea, especially when thousands of folks are running away at the same time. That could be a huge problem. We'll have that. Yeah, we've seen that before. Also, we are back in New York's Bryant Park on the runway. It's Fashion Week there, and the business of fashion is coming up. But the Michael Jordan story, we continue to follow this, uh, Michael's comeback. His iron will is not an issue, but some wonder whether Michael Jordan, at 38 years old, can get in shape for the rigors of the National Basketball Association and a comeback with the Washington Wizards. Now, the betting is that he can do this, and he, of course, will. Details from John Giannone of CNN Sports Illustrated in Chicago. For most of his 1,109 regular season and playoff games, Michael Jordan defied the laws of physics and physicality, a once-in-a-lifetime specimen who turned the NBA into a night at the improv. So it is with some irony that Jordan now courts questions and criticisms about his physical prowess. The injuries that we worry about are muscular uh, tenderness injuries, uh, tearing your Achilles tendon, uh, injuring your rotator cuff, depending on the sport, of course, uh, pulling a hamstring, tearing your, your uh, gastroc uh, muscle tendon, uh, rupturing your quadriceps or patella tendon. Well, it's a battle for anybody. It's a battle for you, for anybody else to stay in to stay in shape, let alone NBA shape. As you get older, you lose something. You do get smarter. Uh, but I'd rather be really good and dumb to really old and wise. <laughs> the debate rages as to which category Jordan belongs. By the time the season begins in November, his 39th birthday will beckon in three months. His tenure away from the game will have eclipsed 1,200 days, a relative lifetime of inactivity. you got to understand the training and the, and the mentality of Michael Jordan. Michael would never be coming back to this game if he wouldn't feel that he could be effective at the highest level that he is right now. If you really want to be in good shape, you have to sacrifice your body on the court and also off the court. You can't do the things that uh, the guys are doing on Friday nights and Saturday nights, and you really have to sacrifice uh, the time to put it in on the court. 
In addition to redefining his sport, Jordan also revolutionized conditioning off the court. Long before personal trainers were all the rage, Jordan had one. He also brought upper body strength into the NBA consciousness. And while he might have weaned himself off the weights in recent years, Jordan never strayed too far from the court or his considerable talent. It won't be that big of an adjustment for him because skill-wise, he, he knows how to play, knows how to move, knows how to get open. And uh, those things are like riding a bike. Uh, you never forget how to do those things. He's probably one of the only athletes in the world that could quit a sport, uh, particularly at this age in his career, in his life, and uh, come back successfully. Uh, I'll bet on him. Most are betting on Jordan because of his trademark steely will. Those who know him say his determination is no different than his open court magic. It's something Jordan will never really lose. Once an athlete, you're always an athlete. And whether you're, you know, 60 years old or 39 or 25, you still got that mentality and you still want to be able to play. You know, the thing that always separated Michael was his will and, uh, and his determination. And so, uh, you know, as I said, he, if he wants to get in shape, he'll, he'll get in NBA game shape. One thing that Michael's always had more than anyone else I've ever seen is the mental discipline for a pain threshold. He can play with a lot more pain than anyone else can. The question now is whether Jordan can still inflict the kind of pain that made him otherworldly. In Chicago, I'm John Giano. You know, what helps him, though, he still has the Jordan mystique and mm -hmm. the psychological advantage, I think, over younger players. Oh, really? So you think that he still can have that intimidation factor oh, I, on the court? Oh, definitely. Absolutely. All right, we'll see. Kira Phillips, though, covering the news today. Hi, Kira. Hi, Carol. At 5'4", and uh, what, 5'1", you are? He'd intimidate us, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't intimidate Vince, though. No first. problem. There, there you yeah, go. Yeah, you would. All right, guys, let's look at the stories that are happening right now. Off the court, researchers say those stem cell lines approved for federal funding won't last forever. President Bush has approved federal funding now for 64 stem cell lines. The National Academy of Sciences panel says new lines will be needed as the old lines age or are corrupted by experiments. Sport utility vehicles dominate the highways, but are they safe? The Insurance Institute is releasing new data from a round of high-speed crash tests on mid-size SUVs. We'll bring you live coverage of the findings about an hour and a half from now. Secretary of State Colin Powell is making his first visit to Latin America since taking office. He's meeting with officials in Colombia today, showing support for the embattled government. And it's been struggling with drugs and a civil war, as you know. More on that now from CNN State, De State Department correspondent Andrea Kopp. Almost one year after the United States agreed to spend $1.3 billion to help Colombia fight its drug war, both governments claim the effort is paying off. The U.S. says 120,000 acres of coca plantations have been sprayed, and 34,000 farmers have agreed to replace their coca plants with legal crops. Still, much of the U.S. military equipment has yet to arrive. To date, only three of 16 Black Hawk helicopters, which Colombian troops need to fight drug traffickers, are in use. So the Colombian government says the real work of Plan Colombia, designed to rid the country of drugs and end the civil war, has only begun. This is a, a long-term uh, issue that requires an integrated approach, that requires the support of the world community and the work of the Colombian people. Uh, as well as, as the, 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 the work of uh, people in this country to, to solve it is for the, for the good of all of us. Complicating matters, the drug traffickers, leftist guerrillas like the FARC and ELN, who use profits from the drug trade to fuel the civil war, have refused to come to the peace table. And while Colombia's president, Andres Pastrana, has tried for three years to negotiate peace, his term ends next summer. Despite the fact that Pastrana is not going to be able to get his peace process uh, by the time he leaves office. You know, it's like the Middle East. You, you don't look for an easy solution, but you also look for a process to continue. Secretary of State Powell's trip to Colombia this week is meant to underscore U.S. support for Colombia's drug war and its president. But privately, Powell's aides worry about what will come of Plan Colombia and the hundreds of millions the U.S. has invested in it once Pastrana leaves office. Said one Powell aide, we want to make sure our assistance pays off. Andrea Koppel, CNN, at the State Department. Well, it's primary election day in some cities and states. In New York City, four Democrats and two Republicans want Rudy Giuliani's job as mayor. Giuliani has served his two terms, the limit in New York. In Massachusetts, the late Congressman Joe Moakley's House seat is, is the prize. Seven Democrats and two Republicans are fighting for those nominations. 
And in Cincinnati, two men who once shared a local TV news anchor desk, current Mayor Charlie Lucan and Curtis Fuller, are the front runners in the city's first nonpartisan primary for mayor. This reverses the career switch of Jerry Springer, who was the first Cincinnati mayor and then became a TV star. Hey, we got options, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If, if Springer, with all the bones in the closet there, I think we could run. Oh, so we could talk about problems. bones in the closet, couldn't we? <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> all right. Thank you, See Kara. See you later. All right. This week is traditionally the peak of hurricane season. We're doing a series of reports we call the Eye of the Storm. Today, evacuation gridlock. We'll start with CNN's John Zarella, who's in the Florida Keys live this morning. John is with us. Good morning, John. Morning, Vince. Let me tell you, emergency managers and hurricane forecasters will always tell you you can run from the water and you can hide from the wind. That means you've got to get out of the way for storm surge, but you can usually hide from the wind. But let me show you the Florida Keys here. This is Isla Mirada. That's the only way out of the Florida Keys. That one road, it's a two-lane road. So here in the Florida Keys, you've got to run from the water and run from the wind both. You really don't have a whole lot of options. But no matter where you live, if you are ordered to evacuate, it may be far more difficult than you think. As Hurricane Floyd moved north along the Atlantic coast, cars didn't move at all. Two years ago, Floyd triggered the largest evacuation in U.S. history. From Florida to the Carolinas, millions left their homes only to sit in gridlock. It's taken us four and a half hours to go eight miles. Many weren't asked or ordered to leave, but were afraid to stay. They added to the bumper-to-bumper -bumper mess. Floyd weakened before striking land, but next time might be different. I really fear that someday we're going to have people stuck in their cars in a gridlock as the core of a major hurricane moves on shore. If they're stuck in their car and that storm surge comes in, they'll be lost in life from drowning. Hundreds. Perhaps thousands may feel fears. Storm surge is a wall of water, sometimes 50, even 100 miles long and perhaps 20 feet high. It sweeps inland as the eye of a hurricane makes landfall. And since the average error in forecasting hurricane landfall is 100 miles, no one knows where the worst storm surge will hit. Again, in 24 hours, I can't tell if it's going to hit here or here or right. down here somewhere. That's why emergency managers over-evacuate. I've got to worry about the southwest quadrant. August 22nd, 2000. Hurricane Debbie is close enough to the Florida Keys that emergency manager Billy Wagner is worried. He's come to the National Hurricane Center in Miami for the latest information. The thing is, I need to respond to a major hurricane. I can't. Within minutes, Wagner learns evacuation is not possible. The only two roads out of the Keys are blocked. I had a jackknife truck on Card Sound and a tanker truck that they got to drill holes in to offload the fuel on US-1. The next day, the roads cleared. Wagner orders a phase one evacuation, tourists and non-residents. Then Hurricane Debbie unexpectedly falls apart. As Carla moves slowly in from the Gulf. A generation ago, evacuation worked pretty well. Back in the 40s and 50s and 60s, if we gave people 12 hours of warning, that was sufficient. Not anymore. There are simply too many people, too many cars, often more than the roads can handle. Many cities now plan to make highways one way out. But experts say that's not a solution. What I'm saying is every new community that goes up, whenever you give the permitting process for this development, they ought to be required to have a shelter <laughs> right on site. So for now, evacuation gridlock remains the nightmare scenario. So much so, one Florida county is looking for a spot along Interstate 75. A parking lot of last resort, where people stuck in their cars can pull into and hopefully survive the big one. If you're ordered to evacuate, the one piece of advice, evacuate early. Do not wait until the last minute and risk getting stuck in gridlock. This is John Zarella reporting live from Isla Mirada in the Florida Keys. All right, thank you very much, John Zarella. Wow, great pictures there to illustrate the uh, power of the storm. We remind, uh, remind you, tune in Sunday for a special hurricane report when the big one hits Sunday, 10 p.m. Eastern Time 
on CNN Presents. All right, but surely Dave Hannon is looking out on the horizon, seeing if there's any hurricane action out there. What's it looking like, Dave? There is indeed uh, hurricane action uh, today. Fortunately, though, this big hurricane, uh, Aaron, is going to move away uh, from the U.S. Uh, winds at uh, one point yesterday up to 120 miles per hour. You see the eye of Hurricane Aaron. And look how close it is to the coast. The uh, thing that's going to happen, though, is this uh, frontal system moving off the east coast is going to pick up the hurricane and begin to move it a little bit farther off towards the east. In fact, it is now moving north. It was moving northwest yesterday. So that turn has already begun. Wind's still pretty strong, though. 90 miles per hour sustained. It is forecast to continue, though, as we said, though, to push away from land. In fact, not expected to affect the Canadian Maritimes either, moving into the North Atlantic. That's uh, what we're expecting with that storm. We are watching another storm, too. This is Tropical Depression number 7, which is located way out in the Atlantic. Same story here. This storm is forecast to go north uh, uh, through the island. So either storm, not a forecast threat to land. We are watching the Gulf of Mexico, though. We've been talking about all that heavy rain in Florida. Uh, that system we'll have to keep a close eye on. Vincent Carroll. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, David. Hey, Fashion Week in New York. Big deal. We get to see a preview of all those fashions out there, but you don't have to be skinny as a rail to appreciate this next segment with CNN's Gail O'Neill. Hey, Gail. That's right, Joey. Coming up, we'll take you behind the scenes at the Liz Latin Maternity Wear Show. Take a look. It's coming up right after the break. Well, it's nice to see you all. It really, really is. Isn't it, honey? Oh, yes. We must do this more often. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, thanks for coming. Where will you find the money to pay for long-term care? <laughs> Conseco long-term care insurance protects you so you don't lose your nest egg. Conseco, step up. Yippee! Woohoo! Yes! We are in the no, sweet no, spot now, baby. Is Give me five. There is no stopping us now. This the sky is, is the limit. Incredible. Nasdaq. They expect the Nasdaq to surge above 6,000. Rather than feel nostalgic for days gone by, a Merrill Lynch financial advisor can help reallocate your portfolio to better navigate today's up and down market. Is it even close to running out? So while we can't bring back the past, we can make the future something to look forward to. We can expect Amy? in the coming months is Director of Amy? Product Development, oh. Paul Noon. Nice speech. Got it. Nortown Networks is building the new high-performance internet, the wireless internet, with optical technology overall, that makes it faster. Overall, this has been an exciting and more reliable. year. But the next few months will mark the beginning of a new... Goes in tight. Come together. In fact, with technology changing... Over me. I remember 20 years ago, how it turned the racing world upside down. First, by introducing a race car with quattro all-wheel drive. And second, by having a woman drive it. Leather, lace, and everything in between, it is all moving down the catwalk at Fashion Week in New York. And CNN's Gail O'Neill has been braving the crowds to see what some of us, at least, are going to be wearing, maybe the most pregnant of us. Morning, Gail. Morning, Carol. I'll tell you, this is the biggest media crush I've seen so far, and it's all over maternity wear. I'm backstage at the Liz Lang Maternity Show, and it's rock and roll back here. We have media from all over the world. There's been huge buzz surrounding the show. Personally, I'm most excited about this show. Here we have the designer, Liz Lang herself, and several of her models who you can see are actually with child, very pregnant. Liz, tell me, why is it so important for, window, for women to shop for this very small window of their lives? Because you know what? It's not such a small window. It's nine months, and then it's a few months when you're trying to get your body back. And it's, you know, you're talking about almost a year. Why would a woman want to take a year off of looking fashionable, feeling pretty, feeling great, feeling sexy? She needs to celebrate this time. Tell me what women's pet, well, actually, I'm going to ask a pregnant woman. What has your pet peeve been when shopping for maternity wear? I think finding something that fits well. 
you know, when you're not pregnant, you're always looking for something that fits the body. And then when you're pregnant, all of a sudden, everything's huge everywhere. And you really only need huge in a, in a few areas. And that's why Liz Lang has done such a great job to make it hip and chic. And, um, you know, your life continues. You know, this whole year, you still have to work. You have to work out. You know, I'm a professional tennis player. And Liz Lang created a line for Nike. And it's so fantastic because I can keep doing my aerobics, my yoga, and tennis. And looking good while you're doing it. Now, tell me, how do women feel when they're wearing maternity clothes that are tent-like with the people? Peter Pan collars and how does that fly? It doesn't actually. Liz Lang's clothing fly because they complement the body, your skin, and there's no ne there's never ending when you can look younger. You can be 30 and look younger. You can be 40. It doesn't matter. And here we are. <laughs> and you don't mind hiding, or you don't want to hide anything, do you? No, I love showing it off. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. I feel really grateful and lucky that you know. I, didn't, I don't have to go through what my mother went through. She kind of had to hide out at home in a tent. I can just walk around and show it off. And people, especially New Yorkers, they really like it. I get so many comments and smiles on the street. And it's really nice. Well, I have a feeling they're smiling back in Atlanta. Liz, ladies, thank you very much. I'm so excited about this show. Back to you, Carol. Hey, Gail, can you take some of these clothes after you're pregnant and tailor them down so you can wear them on, you know, just any old day? Absolutely. Carol wants to know if you can wear these clothes only when you're pregnant or can we wear it after. I would wear that dress tomorrow. Absolutely, you can wear these clothes afterwards. Case of point, I had a baby 11 months ago. I'm in my own Liz Lang knit top. I expect these girls to wear these clothes afterwards. They stretch with you when you're pregnant and they stretch right back when you're not. They, they should be great. And Carol, they are colorful, they're contemporary, there's nothing Wilma Flintstone about them. Not I love Lucy, all. but we don't want to look like that anymore when we're pregnant. All right, hey, this is New York City you're talking about. Do people actually walk down the streets like that woman in the black and white top? Uh, do women actually walk down the street like you in New York City? Well, I have. My husband tells me to put more clothes on, but <laughs> I do it, you know, when I feel comfortable. Not, you know, in crowded, crowded places, but I think it's great. You know what? She actually said to me earlier that she's a little bit shy, and I said, you're shy and you're going on TV in front of millions of people and walking down this runway. She's not shy about walking down a runway, but very shy about doing this in New York City. You know, yeah. go figure. Yeah, she's I can brave. tell how shy she is. All right. Yeah. Thanks so much, Gail. Gail O'Neill from you. Fashion Week in New York. We'll be right back. CNN Live at Daybreak is brought to you by The Munder Funds, featuring a full range of Focus Mutual Funds. Who would have thought you could turn the waste in our landfills into electric power? Who would have thought computers would soon be hogging half the U.S. power supply? Energy demand is at an all-time high. So we created the Munder Power Plus Fund, investing in conventional energy sources plus companies that pioneer better ways to produce power. To learn more, check the web or call the Munder Power Plus Fund, focused on powering the future. Among the highest number of graduates in computer science and engineering in the country, over 4,700 graduates in computer and information sciences, over 5,000 graduates in engineering, including chemical and bioengineering, and they all graduated from the same place. Just who produces this kind of talent for the workforce each and every year? Pennsylvania. When it comes to lending and leasing to businesses and consumers, CIT stands apart. Because when you combine nearly a century of experience with dedication, desire, and imagination, you've got what it takes to make even the impossible look easy. And from that perspective, it's little wonder that today's business leaders put their trust in today's financing leader, CIT. With posted pop-up notes in the handy dispenser, you always know where your notes are. So, you won't go nuts looking for nuts. And posted pop-up dispensers also come in these cool colors. I'm Amanda Lang at the New York Stock Exchange, where we could be in for a solid open to the trading day. Stock index futures point to some buying for the broader market and for techs. One sector that could provide a boost, wireless stocks. Nokia is saying it expects to meet earnings targets for the current quarter, but the world's largest mobile phone maker is warning that third quarter sales will be about 5% below the year-ago level. That's because of slumping sales in its network equipment division. 
Nokia, which closed yesterday just a dollar five cents above its lowest level in a year, is surging 10 percent in free market trading. Motorola, one of its top competitors, is adding five percent. But one stock that could come under pressure is Boeing. Prudential has cut its 12-month price target on the Dow component to $42 from 60. Boeing closed Monday at about 43 and a half. That's the latest from Wall Street. CNN Live at Daybreak. We'll be right back. Financial News Update is brought to you by Georgia Pacific. We make the things that make you feel at home. Would you like to lower your monthly mortgage payments or use the equity in your home to consolidate your credit card or other debts? 